ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ان دي اول برايز از ديو تو الله وي برايز هيم سيك هيز ايد اند اسك هيز فورغيفنس وي سيك ريفيوج ان الله فروم ذا ايفل اوف اور سينز اند وي سيك ريفيوج ان الله فروم اور سيلز من يهده الله فلا مضل له whoever allah guides there is none who can misguide him wa man yudlil fala hadiya lahu and whoever allah causes to be misguided there is none who can guide him ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lahu i bear witness there is no deity worthy of worship except allah he is alone and he has no partners وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله I also bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he is the worship of Allah and his final messenger أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله thereafter the best of speech is the book of Allah وخير الهدى هدى النبي صلى الله عليه wa sallam and the best guidance is the guidance of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa inna sharr al umur muhdathatuha and the most evil affairs are those matters which people have innovated and introduced into islam fa inna kulla muhdathatin bid'a wa kulla bid'atin dalala wa kulla dalalatin fi nar every innovation is a bid'a and every bid'a it is misguidance and every misguidance only leads to the fire ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullah wa qulu qawlan sadida o people of iman have taqwa of allah and only say a correct truthful word yuslih lakum a'malakum he will rectify for you your affairs wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum and forgive for you your sins wa man yuti'i allah wa rasulah and whoever shows obedience to Allah and his messenger faqad faza fawzan azima he has achieved a great success ibad allah ayyuhal muslimun from the signs which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed upon this earth which show us his greatness is his creation and there is nothing more greater in the creation of allah than ourselves meaning the creation of the human body so whoever looks to his own body and looks to its perfect creation and how the body has been organized whoever ponders and thinks about the creation of the eye just the eye or an ear whoever thinks about just his hand or his foot whoever ponders the complexity of the brain or the strength of the heart whoever thinks about the structure of his bones or the flexibility of the joints whoever thinks or ponders about any one of these will see the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his creation and for this reason Allah ordered us to contemplate and think about the creation of Allah he said wa fil ardi ayatul lil muqinin that upon the earth are clear signs for the people of certainty wa fi anfusikum afala tubsirun and also in your own selves in your bodies in the creation of your form there are great signs which prove the greatness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afala tubsirun so do you not look and think and from those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for the insan is his tongue the tongue al lisan this is a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is a wonder of his creation consider this tongue how small it is and yet how powerful its effect can be this tongue how small it is yet it can bring men to tears 
and it can make men laugh. This tongue, it can bring closer a person who you love. And because of this tongue, you can strike fear into your enemies. By the utterance of the tongue, a person is married. By the utterance of the tongue, a person can divorce. This tongue, it can bring joy to the people. It can bring happiness to the people. And this same tongue can bring much pain and hurt upon the people. Because of this tongue and the words that it utters, connections and relationships are built. And because of this tongue, relationships are broken. Perhaps two people will not speak with each other for long years, for many years, because of a single word that one of them uttered. And more importantly, this tongue, it can either please the Lord of the heavens and the earth, or it can anger him. This tongue can either hold open the door of Jannah for you by the permission of Allah, or it opens the door of Jahannam for you. And that which the tongue utters, the words that it says, they can be more hurtful and more painful to a person than even physical violence and the stealing of a person's wealth because the bruise which results as a from hitting the body this bruise it will it will go it will disappear any injury can be recovered from the wealth which is taken a person can recover this wealth however the pain and the hurt which is caused by words which the tongue utters, the emotional and the mental scars can remain for many years with a person. Ibadallah ayyuha al-Muslimun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has made this tongue an avenue for much goodness. Many great acts of worship, many good deeds, which have a great reward, they can be done because of this tongue. And at the same time, conversely, Many sins, the worst of the sins, the most severe of the sins, occur because of this tongue. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said to Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu an, he said, "Ala ukhbiruka bi ra'as al-amr wa umudhi wa dhirwa tusnami." He said, "O Mu'adh, should I not inform you of the core of this religion and the pillar of this religion?" and the highest peak of this religion. Mu'adh said, Bala ya Rasulullah. Of course, O Messenger of Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ra'sul amr al-Islam. That the core of this religion, it is al-Islam, meaning al-Tawheed. Wa'umuduhu as-salah. And the pillar of this religion, it is as-salah. Wa'dhirwatu sanamihi al-jihadu fi sabilillah. And the highest peak of this religion, it is al-jihad fi sabilillah. Then he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ala ukhbiruka bi malaki thaliki kullihi. Should I not inform you of that which holds all of it together? Qultu bala ya Rasulullah. I said, of course, O Messenger of Allah. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, akhada bi lisanihi. He took hold of his tongue like this and he said Kuffa alayka hadha Control this Control your tongue Mu'adh radiallahu anhu said Ya Nabi Allah O Prophet of Allah A'inna lamu'akhaduna bima natakallamu bih He said O Prophet of Allah will, will, be, will we be held accountable? Will we be questioned because of what we say? I not physical hurt, not violence, not killing, not using weapons, we're not stealing wealth, just words which are being uttered by the tongue. And we're going to be questioned about this. The Prophet وسلم, said, Thakilatka ummuka ya Mu'adh, wa hal yukabbun nas fin nari ala wujuhihim illa hasaidu al sinatihim. He said, O oh, Mu'adh, Will the people be dragged to the fire upon their faces because of anything else except 
the insults of the tongue because the words which the tongue utters and many people unfortunately today have neglected the tongue many people they have failed to guard their tongue so they have loosened the reins for the tongue to speak with whatever it wants they stop guarding it they stop safeguarding it and you should know O Muslims that the tongue it has many dangers and many sins a person can commit because of the tongue and the dangers of the tongue it gives birth to animosity between the people it gives birth to spite and malice between the people and yet people have neglected it and this tongue the dangers of this tongue is it angers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and perhaps a person leaves the group of the salihin the righteous and instead he ends up with the usat and the fasiqeen with the sinners and those who disobey Allah so from the dangers of the tongues of Muslim is a sukhriya is mocking and joking about other people what tanabuz bil alqab and giving nicknames to other people and all of this is haram mocking another person insulting him giving him nicknames all of this is forbidden in al-islam you are not allowed to mock another individual you are not allowed to mock a nation you are not allowed to mock a tribe or a group of people men and women and allah said in the quran ya ayyuhalladhina amanu O oh people of Iman, لا يسخر قوم من قوم. Do not allow a group of people to mock another people. عسى أن يكونوا خيرا منهم. Perhaps that group of people, perhaps that nation or that country which you are mocking, perhaps they are better than you. ولا نساء من نساء. And neither should women mock and joke about other women. Perhaps those women who are being mocked are better than those women who are mocking. He said, وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ And do not defame each other. Do not belittle each other. وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ And do not insult each other with nicknames. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, بِحَسَبِ امْرِئٍ مِّنَ الشَّرِّ and yahqira akhahu muslim that it is sufficient evil for a muslim it is bad enough it is evil enough it is enough sin for a muslim that he belittles his muslim brother so a sukhriya mocking and belittling looking down upon the people pointing out the weaknesses of people making others laugh at the expense of a person all of this is a severe sin and al istihza wa sukhriya mocking it has different levels the worst and most severe of mockery is those who mock allah or his messenger his religion the book of allah or one of his ayat in fact this is kufr this is clear kufr clear disbelief it takes a person out of the fold of islam bi ijma'il ulama by the complete agreement of the ulama and Allah said regarding those people who mock Allah they mock Islam they mock the hijab they mock the beard they mock the sharia they mock the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah said wala in sa'altahum if you were to question them about this mockery la yaqulunna inna ma kunna nakhud wa nalab they will respond that we were only joking we were only jesting and then Allah says قُلْ أَبِاللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَهْزِئُونَ say to them was it regarding Allah you were joking was it regarding the messenger of Allah that you were mocking was it the ayat of Allah which you mocked was there nothing else which you f could find to mock you could not joke about your own selves you couldn't mock your own wives you couldn't mock your own lives you couldn't mock your houses and your careers you only found Allah to mock 
and to joke against his messenger and to make a joke about the religion of Allah he said لا تعتذروا do not make any excuses قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم you have disbelieved after your iman and also from the severe types of mockery is mocking the ulama of Islam the scholars of Islam speaking about them without a right warning against them based on silly rumors slandering them and Allah has raised the ranks of the ulama the a'imma the du'at and the tulab al-ilm Allah said يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Allah raises the ranks of those people of Iman amongst you and also those who have been given knowledge and Ibn Asakir rahimullah he said his famous statement he said لُحُومُ الْعُلَمَاء مَسْمُومَة that the flesh of the scholars it is poisonous meaning backbiting them is more severe and also from the dangers of the tongue and the great sins and the severe sins of the tongue is al-fahisha wa bada'at al-lisan is speaking with lewdness making immoral jokes uttering dirty speech speaking with uh, in a derogatory way joking about women treating them as objects just for sexual gratification and all of this is also haram in our religion however unfortunately many people because of the society we live in because of the films which are around the advertising advertisement boards the music which is widespread the ways of this society in terms of how they treat women and how they joke about women and the dirty speech that they come out with this type of language has become spread amongst the people so you see an old person adult and yet when he insults others he insults them by their mothers by their sisters by their daughters and also the youth you hear them always speaking with fahisha mentioning dirty words and dirty speech and this is not from the practice of the muslims this is only because of a lack of Iman, a lack of Taqwa, قِلَّةُ haya, not having al haya. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَيْسَ الْمُؤْمِنُ بِالطَّعَانٍ وَلَا لَعَانٍ وَلَا فَاحِشٍ وَلَا بَذِيءٍ لِسَانٍ That the believer, the mu'min, he's not ta'an, he doesn't swear and insult people. وَلَا لَعَانٍ And neither does he curse people. وَلَا فَاحِشْ And neither did he come out with dirty, immoral, lewd statements. وَلَا بَذِيءَ lisan, And neither is he lowly in his words. And also from the dangers of the tongue and the severe sins is اللعن والسب is اللعن i cursing and a sub swearing and insulting. And when a person swears at another Muslim or insults another Muslim he leaves the obedience of Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, سَبُّ الْمُسْلِمْ فُسُوق وَقِتَالُهُ كُفْر That insulting or swearing another Muslim at another Muslim, this is fusuq. I This is leaving the obedience of Allah. وَقِتَالُهُ كُفْر And fighting another Muslim, this is a type of disbelief. And as for اللعن, cursing, <coughs> then this is invoking curse upon a person. Allah it is الدُّعَا بِالطَّرْضْ وَالْإِبْعَادْ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ This is the meaning of Allah. It is to invoke for a person to be removed from the mercy of Allah. To be far away from the mercy of Allah. And nobody has a right to do this. No Muslim, regardless of how righteous they are, has a reason or a justification to invoke for another person to be removed from the mercy of Allah even if it is a non-Muslim even if he is from the enemies of Islam in Islam you are not allowed to make la'an to curse another individual and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said regarding cursing a believer he said la'anul mu'min ka qatlihi that 
invoking la'na, curse upon another believer, it is like killing him. And Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates, Qila ya Rasulullah, ud'u ala al-mushrikeen. A person came to the Prophet and said, O Messenger of Allah, make dua against the mushrikeen, meaning curse them. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith is in Sahih Muslim, he said, Inni lam ub'ath la'anan, innama bu'ithu rahmatan. He said, I was not sent to curse everybody. I was sent as a form of mercy. And amongst the kuffar, amongst the Quraysh, there were certain individuals, a select few individuals, and they were ardent enemies of Islam. They used to harm the Muslims. They used to torture the Muslims more than the Muslims could bear. And Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu narrated, he said, one day, Sami'tu Rasulallah wa huwa yarfa'u ra'sahu min al ruku'. I heard the Messenger of Allah saying, whilst he was raising his head from al ruku' fi raka'at al akhirati min salat al fajr, from the last raka'ah of salat al fajr. Ibn Umar said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Allahumma al'an fulanan wa fulanan wa fulan. I heard him say, O oh Allah, send your la'na upon a particular individual, this person, this person, this person. And these three people, they were the worst of the kuffar, the most ardent enemies of Islam. They were the ones who had most harm upon the Muslims. And yet, when Allah heard this statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah corrected him. He said, لَيْسَ لَكَ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءٍ He said, Oh Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have nothing to do with this affair. You have nothing to do with whether Allah has mercy upon a person or whether Allah brings punishment to a person. لَيْسَ لَكَ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءٍ O Yatuba alayhim, O Yu'adhibahum fa innahum zalimun. Whether Allah forgives these people, or whether Allah punishes these people because they are zalimun, but it is not in your hands. And from this the ulama, they take the benefit that it is not allowed for a Muslim to curse a specific individual, even if he is the worst of creation, the most harmful of the non-Muslims, the greatest enemy of Islam, we are not allowed to curse this individual. Ayyuhal ibad, the tongue, it is something which is very dangerous and it can have severe consequences upon a person in this dunya and the akhirah. And because of the tongue, a person can open much evil for himself. How much animosity, adawa, is because of a word, a word which was uttered? How many relationships? have been broken because of a word which was uttered. How many sins are there which come due to the tongue? A person, na'udhu billah, he, might, he may fall into zina, may Allah protect us, beginning with just a word, just a conversation, and then he falls into zina. Worse than this, a person may leave the fold of Islam because of a word which he has uttered. And therefore the aqil, the intelligent person, <coughs> is the one who is in control of his tongue. And the foolish person, the Safi, is the one who is controlled by his tongue. The Aqil, he thinks first and then he speaks. The Safi, the foolish, he speaks first and then he thinks. And then he makes excuses. So be from the Uqala, be from the intelligent people. وَلَا تَكُونُوا مِنَ sufaha And do not be from the foolish people. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله خالق كل شيء ورازق كل شيء أحمده وأشكره وأستغفره وأتوب إليه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أيها العباد my brothers and sisters this tongue which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, it is a key, miftah. It is a key which can open two doors for you. Either it can open the door of goodness and the door of Jannah for you by the permission of Allah. Or it can open the door of evil and the door of Jahannam for you. And there are many great acts of ibadah great acts of ta'a, of obedience to Allah, 
which occur because of the tongue and from the most easiest acts of worship and yet the greatest and the most rewarding is dhikrullah is remembering Allah the tongue of a Muslim should be moist with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ala ukhbirukum bi khayri a'malikum Should I not tell you of the best of your actions? Wa azkaha inda malikikum And the most pure of your actions with your owner, with Allah Wa arfa'aha fi darajatikum And the highest of the actions in terms of your ranks He said Wa khayrul lakum min infaqi dhahbin wa fiddha and should I not inform you of an action which is better and more rewarding for you than giving in gold and silver? And should I not tell you of an action which is more rewarding for you than meeting your enemies on a battlefield and you striking their necks and they striking your necks? They said, Bala ya Rasulullah. Said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah. He said, Dhikrullahi Azza wa Jal. Making dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. So, Dhikrullah, what is it? It is just the movement of the tongue. Only a few short words. It only takes a few seconds. It doesn't take a great effort. It doesn't require a lot of time. You don't have to give a lot of wealth. Just words that a person says. And yet, the Prophet وسلم, he said, the most virtuous of actions the most rewarding of actions, the most pure of actions, better than giving gold and silver in the way of Allah. And the greatest type of dhikr, the most beloved speech to Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he informed us. He said, Ahabbul kalami ilallah arba. That the most beloved statements to Allah are four. Subhanallah. Walhamdulillah. وَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ The easiest type of dhikr, the shortest form of dhikr, and yet the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore Muslims, we should make our tongues an avenue to goodness, not an avenue to evil. Our tongues should be the key to Jannah for us, and not the key to Jahannam for us. And we should know that every statement that we make, we will be questioned. And Allah said in the Quran, مَا يَلْفِضُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ That nobody utters any statement, any word, except upon him is an observer, observing and recording everything which he has said. عباد الله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم ذل الشرك والمشركين اللهم دمر أعداءك أعداء الدين اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم اغفر لنا ما قدمنا وما أخرنا وما أسررنا وما أعلنا وما أنت أعلم به منا أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر لا إله إلا أنت عباد الله اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة